The opening scene features a couple named Will and Sam, who are expecting their first child. However, there is a problem, they aren't married. As a result, Will must seek permission from her parents, particularly her strict father, Tom, who harbors disapproval for reasons unknown. Sam advises Will to go easy on father and not to bring up the particular boat incident. Following this, he travels from Seattle to Chicago to meet her parents. As Will arrives at his destination, Sam's mother, Paula welcomes him inside. Things get awkward as soon as he meets Tom, who treats him quite coldly. Here, we learn that Tom is a retired soldier, who served in the armed forces for more than 30 years. Later, at dinner, they discuss helping Will and Sam on purchasing a house, but Tom is also concerned about protecting his money in case the two break up. He believes that Will influenced his daughter to move away from her parents. Hearing this, Will gets angry and reveals that it was actually Sam's idea to relocate. He also discloses that it's specifically because she doesn't want her father breathing down her neck all the time. This ensues an argument between the two and as a result, Will leaves without mentioning about the pregnancy or wedding. The next day, Sam calls in before his flight back. She seems to be aware of what happened the previous night and decides to talk to once he reaches the airport. In the midst their conversation, a strange sound emanates from Sam's background, causing her to be scared. She claims that something is wrong, but before they can discuss further, the line goes dead. Will repeatedly attempts to call back and also leaves a voice message, but he is unable to reach her. He then hurries to the airport to catch his flight to Seattle, only to discover that all flights cancelled. There is a TV news report discussing preliminary reports on a seismic event off west coast of the U.S. that has disrupted electrical power and telecommunication made to re-earth Will apartment. As he exits the airport, there is already a huge traffic jam with people trying to get cab rides. Will then hands extra money to a cab driver and secures a ride. Upon arriving at the apartment, he finds that Sam's parents are already packing up to leave. Not being able to reach their daughter worries them as well, so Tom decides to drive to Seattle and get his daughter rather than waiting for flights. He asks if Will is coming with them, to which the latter says yes after this. The two set off on a long road to Seattle. As they drive out, they witness the city has already turned very chaotic. Sometime later, they arrive at a gas station where a huge pile of cars and people are all fighting for supplies. While filling up the gas, some local goons try to intimidate Will for money. Tom cleverly plays along and tells them that he has cash in the car trunk. However, he surprises the thugs by brandishing a gun, scaring them away. As they resume their journey, Will complains to Tom about the why he is carrying a firearm with him. In response, Dad says that if the goons had taken their car and money, it would already have been game over. After a while of driving, they encounter another problem. The army has closed off the interstate for safety reasons, but upon invoking his prior service as a marine officer and explaining the situation, Tom manages to persuade them to let his car through. Following this, the two drive non-stop for the entire day. As it gets dark, they are pulled over by a police car. However, it turns out that the driver is not a police officer, rather a civilian with a shotgun. The man opens fire, prompting Will and Tom to get inside their car and speed away. After a brief chase, the duo managed to escape momentarily using another abandoned vehicle to block the crazy man's path. They then exit the highway and take a narrow way. Suddenly, some gears come on their way, causing them to swerve and crash. Due to this, the pursuer catches them again. As the man holds Will at gunpoint, Tom manages attack him from behind and knock him down. This commotion causes Tom's ribs to get fractured. 
In the aftermath of this event, they used the police vehicle and to their damaged car to a nearby reservation. There, they meet a female mechanic named Ricky, who agrees to repair their car but at a higher price. In the midst of this, they witness an unusual sight, a flock of birds, flying in an odd formation. After the repair, Tom worries that their car might break down again. Knowing that Ricky wants to go to California, he asks her to accompany them in their journey. The repair girl is initially hesitant, but she eventually agrees when Tom offers her a huge sum of $2,000. Following this, the trio embarks on their road trip. Along the way, they observe another anomaly. Their compass needle continuously rotates, indicating disrupted magnetic fields in area. While discussing this, a car in front of them suddenly loses control and crashes. Rushing to the scene to check, they find all occupants dead. Just then, a group of armed men arrives, prompting the trio to drive away without getting into any further trouble. Later on, they pull over on the side of the to refill gas in their vehicle. There in this, the clouds form a menacing shape, and the weather starts getting worse. Soon after, a storm, lightning and rain ensues, compelling them to seek shelter under a bridge until it stops. As days pass by, things only get more and more intense. The temperature rises up, prompting Will to increase the AC in the car. At one point, they decide to pull over at an abandoned water park in search of some supplies. Ricky, who is excited to see a pool, jumps, expecting cool water. However, the temperature rises has warmed the water. The two guys laugh at her action and then proceed to scavenge some supplies before resuming their journey. As the evening dawns, they notice that the fields on the side of the road have caught fire. Despite this, they continue to drive forward. Soon after, they are stopped by a woman who pleads for help, claiming that she has flat tire. The trio, in a generous gesture, steps out of their car to help her, but much to their shock, it turned out to be a trap as a group of armed men surround them. They hold the three of them at gunpoint and steal all of their gasoline reserves. Will requests them to leave them with one gas can, but is pleased, all in deaf ears. They rob everything and abandon them to die in the middle of the road. Knowing that they are doomed without fuel, the three decide to give them a chase and reclaim their supplies. After an intense chase, they eventually catch up to the thugs. Ricky shoots out the tires, causing their car to flip and crash. With the surrounding fire and the crashed car's leaking gas tank, they barely have enough time to take their gasoline back. But fortunately, they manage to retrieve a can of gas before the car explodes. In the aftermath, all three of them are visibly distressed but Ricky is even more upset as she believes that she killed them. She also regrets accompanying them in this hell. Will tries to console her, saying that if they didn't do so, they would be dead. However, she is overwhelmed by the guilt, so she asks Will to pull over. She then exits the vehicle and sits on the side of the road, believing that she needs some time alone to calm herself down, and Tom get inside the car and fall asleep. The following morning, the two men wake to find Ricky and her belongings gone. Unable to do anything about it, they continue on their journey to Seattle. Over time, Tom's health starts to deteriorate due to his fractured ribs we of driving. They come across a train wreck, where they make a stop. Will approaches the train to check for some gas, while Tom rests in car. During this, Tom's lungs starts to calling it difficult for him to breathe. Seeing him suffer, Will rushes back to him and injects a needle, alleviating the pressure in his lungs. Back in the car, the two finally begin to open up to each other. Tom, who knows that he won't survive much longer, has Will promised that he will always take care of Sam. He also reveals that he knows about his daughter's pregnancy because she had told him the same night when they had an argument. It is at this moment that Will brings 
of the boat incident in which Tom's precious boat, got wrecked, Will finally discloses that it was Sam, who was writing it in an inebriated, state. Hearing this, Tom believes that Will a good man and he will be a good father as well. After a while, the two come across a bridge they are stopped by a gang of armed men on motorcycles. Will tries to explain situation to them, but he consents that they, won't let them go. In a swift action, he reverses, the car as the motorcycles follow them. Grand own land blows up them, allowing them to evade the gang. But tragically, Tom succumbs to his wounds in this process. Although saddened, Will continues driving, until the car breaks down, not wanting to leave. Tom's body to rot, Will douses gasoline, over the vehicle and burns it down. He then, continues the rest of his journey on foot. It's the fifth day of the journey, Will is walking along a desolate road when he notices, a jeep approaching from behind. He signals for, a lift and the vehicle stops. A man walks out of the vehicle and agrees to help him, since he has, his wife and a little daughter inside the jeep. The man asks Will to hand over his firearm. Following this, Will leads them to his estranged, father's empty house in Idaho where they all take, them rest. Here, Will strikes a deal with, he gets their vehicle in exchange for them, staying at his father's house for three weeks. The man agrees to the deal and as a result, Will, gets back to his seemingly never-ending journey. As he gets closer to Seattle, he sees that city is almost completely destroyed. The mystery, begins as Will reaches 30 miles outside of town, where he notices dead victims buried in their cars, under a thick layer of ash. Upon entering city, the environment is even more ravaged with debris and bodies littering everywhere. He finally, reaches Sam's apartment, only to discover that the, entire half of the building is gone. Just then, he, sees a note that reads, come find me and there's, an address as well. Without delay, he drives, towards the specified location using a paper map. Shortly after, Will arrives at a cabin where, he's greeted by a man firing at him. He is, former neighbor from their apartment building, named Jeremiah. Just then, Sam runs out of the cabin and the couple finally have an emotional reunion. Jeremiah, who has been staying with Sam and helping her, seems to have developed feelings for her. Hence, he seems to be a bit jealous. Later that night, Will is awakened by an earthquake. He goes out to see the northern lights in the sky. He also notices Sam and Jeremiah hanging out at a campfire. As Will joins them, Jeremiah starts talking about what is causing all of these events. He reveals a deep paranoia, convinced that the disaster is not natural but the result of an elaborate attack. According to him, a man-made bomb was dropped on the coast and caused the fallout. However, Will completely disagrees with his theory based on what he has witnessed out there on the road. The following morning, he spots Jeremiah inspecting his jeep. When he confronts the man, the latter takes him into the woods and tries to kill him. Jeremiah says that he wants Sam to be only his. However, before he can pull the trigger, Will shoots him down in self-defense. Soon after, a volcanic eruption triggers a massive burst of fire, ash and shock waves, creating a pyroclastic flow. Seeing this, hurriedly takes Sam, and the two speed away from, the all-engulfing cloud, barely staying ahead, of it. Eventually, they manage to outdistance, it as it subsides. The movie ends as they hug north, hoping to find a safe place. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.